We have seen that we can program in Lisp as in any other language, with an interpreter and an editor. But in Lisp we can have a much better developer experience. There are many IDEs, open source and proprietary. The standard open source choice is Emacs. But for a beginner, there is a pre-configured version of Emacs that ships all the main packages that one needs to get started. Portacle. The main issue is that you will have to learn some basic usage of Emacs anyway. Portacle can be downloaded from the official site for all the main platforms. In this video, I want to show you the basic usage of Portacle. We can now open it. Let's start with some naming. In Emacs, a frame is what we usually call a window, while a window is a subdivision of a frame. In this case, we have a frame with two windows, one in the bottom half of the screen and the other in the top half of the screen. A buffer is the content of a window. We will usually have two windows, one with the interpreter, in this case the bottom half, and the other with a Lisp file that we are going to open in the top half of the screen. Let's open a file in the top half of the screen, so we select the window and then with Ctrl X, Ctrl F we can specify the file we want to open. We can see that the Emacs asks the path in the bottom of the screen. For example, we can go inside the projects directory. Inside it we want to create an example folder with inside a file example Dot Lisp. We can press enter. Emacs tell us that the file does not exist but we want really to create it so we confirm. And then we can see that the Emacs in the bottom of the screen suggests us to create the directory we are in using the mx key binding and then the command make directory. m is the meta key which is usually the ALT key on the PCs. So we press ALT X and then run the command make directory. The path in which we want to create the directory is the one we are currently in, so we confirm with enter. MX let us enter all the commands available inside Emacs, but for the most common one we don't have to type the whole command because uh, it is usually bound to some key binding. Now let's try to write a program that sums two integer read from the command line. The goal is to be able to write, compile and run a command inside the portacle. For the moment we assume that we have a function readint that reads an integer from the command line and we start to write the main function. It defines two variables a which is an integer read from the command line and b which is another integer read from the command line. Finally it simply prints the sum on the screen. Let's say the file with Ctrl X, Ctrl S. And then we can compile this function by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl C. On the bottom half of the screen, we can see that Common Lisp compiled the function main. And during the compilation, he met a function readint which is not defined. Pay attention, this is not an error, it's just a warning. 
we won't have an error as long as we don't run the main function. Now on the shell, let's try to run the main function. We can run this command using control enter. Now this is an error. In particular, it tells us that uh, the readint function is undefined and uh, ask what we want to do. In another programming language, we would have to abort the execution and run the script again. We could do also this inside Lisp, but in this case, I want to show you what we can do with Lisp. So we do not answer this question for the moment, we just go back to the file. We don't see it now, but the file is still opened behind the CN inside the buffer. We just have to put the, that buffer inside one of the two windows. For example, we can uh, switch the top, the content of the top window. We can open an existing buffer with Ctrl X B and then typing the name of the buffer. For the moment, just note the name of the buffer with the error, which is SLDB. We can see that in the bottom, Emacs already proposes us example.lisp, so we just have to press enter. Now we can implement the function and compile it. It should ask the user for a number. Flash the output. And finally, read a string and parse it to an integer. We can save the file with Ctrl X, Ctrl S and uh, compile the function with Ctrl C, Ctrl C. In the bottom, we can see that Common Lisp compiled the function readint. Let's go back to the buffer with the error, Ctrl X B, and then we can open the buffer SLDB. To the multiple choices, we can tell the Lisp interpreter to retry calling readint. We can see that the execution resume where we left it. In this case, we could have run the file again and we would have obtained the same result. Nevertheless, you can imagine that this is a really interesting feature for complex program because we have never stopped our function. We started the main, we met an error, we defined a new function and then we resumed execution of the main where we left it. Next time we will explore more portable feature that could improve our developer experience.